to the Suffolk Sewing Circle. Today we will be making this adorable bowl cover, which is a good beginner project for beginners who are looking to add just a little bit of skill to their repertoire. This project is going to show you how to apply binding, so it's a good way to practice your sewing machine skills. If you're like me, you hate using saran wrap to cover bowls. It's wasteful, it creates a lot of garbage, and it's really a pain. These are a nice solution because they just fit right onto the bowl. They're custom made to fit the shape of your individual bowl. Not to mention they're an excellent scrap buster. Um, like a lot of sewists, I have lots of little pieces of material sitting around and I would love to find projects to use them up. This is a great one for that. Um, and so today we will be showing you how to make your own bowl cover. Uh, this is a great one to sew along with us if you're joining us from home, even if you didn't get a kit from the library. This is going to be the kind of project where you make your own pattern depending on the shape of your bowl. In this case, I'm going to show you how I made one for this bowl that's a little bit more than six inches in diameter. Uh, you can adjust this to be any size you want. This is just a general instructional video on how to do that. And so, uh, follow along and learn how you can make one of these bowl covers for yourself. Thanks for joining us. Okay. So to get started with our bowl cover project, I just want to go over the materials that you will need to do this. Uh, and this is what comes in your kit if you receive one from the library. So um, for this project, I'm using just a small bowl like I would eat out of, um, but you can adjust this to any bowl size that you like to use. You can even make them for your mixing bowls and things like that. Um, so. The fun thing about this project is we're going to make our pattern to fit whichever bowl in your house you want to use this for. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that in a moment. So fabric wise, what you'll need for this project is a small piece. In this case, I cut a 44 inch wide piece of quilting cotton. Um, I've cut a half a yard and then I cut that in half um, sort of pa parallel with the selvages. So I had this small, almost square piece. This is big enough to make most any size bowl cover I want. So I could even make a, a pretty large one for a mixing bowl out of this size piece. So this is a great project to use uh, for scrap busting. If you have small pieces that are intact, you know, you can kind of make a square out of them, then that's probably big enough for this project. As far as other materials, you will need a piece of quarter inch wide double fold binding. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what makes it double fold. So that means that if I were to straighten this all the way out, they folded it once and then folded it again. So it looks like a little sandwich. So you can uh, buy this pretty much anywhere that you can buy sewing supplies. And you'll also need a piece of um, elastic. Uh, so we want about eighth inch wide elastic. You want it to be smaller than your binding. As far as how much of it you need, it depends on what bowl you're using. So let's zoom back out. You want to have a piece of binding that would go all the way around your bowl. So to estimate that, you can kind of take your measuring tape and measure. So it should go all the way around. And then once you figure out how long that is, you want to cut a piece of elastic that's going to be five inches shorter than that. So you can see here my elastic, I'm going to do like this so you can see the end of it. My elastic is a little bit shorter than my binding. And so that's going to allow it to be taut when I have the cover on the bolt. Some other things you'll need for this project would be matching thread. And I matched it to my binding this time so it won't show because that's where our stitches are going to be on the outside. You're also going to need um, some sort of ruler. I like to use a seam gauge for projects like this, but a regular ruler would work if you don't have that. And also a pen to mark with and then something to cut with. And I'm going to use my rotary blade this time. And lastly, you will need a safety pen. So uh, those are the materials you'll need and I'll show you how to get started. Okay. 
So to begin with, I just want to mention a note about difficulty. Uh, this is considered a beginner project, but it does use a sewing machine and we are going to sew in a circle. And so because of that, I wouldn't do this if you've never ever sewn before. I would try doing something that has you sew in straight lines first. Um, but otherwise, if you're looking to expand a little bit, you're getting started with sewing and you want to do something just a slight bit more difficulty than the very first thing you've ever done, then you can do this project. Um, as far as the bowl I chose, so this one is a little over six inches across. Um, like I said, it's a serving bowl um, that you would eat out of. Um, so the larger your bowl is, the more binding you will need and the more elastic you will need. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing. Um, so the, the amount of binding that came in my kit here that I'm able to use uh, fits a bowl about this size. So just keep that in mind. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is this is the wrong side of my fabric. Uh, I have already pre-washed and pressed this with my iron so it's nice and flat. Uh, it's not going to shrink or expand at all once we use it, so that's good. Uh, so now we're ready to get started. So we're going to turn our bowl upside down because the first thing we're going to do is trace it. And so um, don't get it too close to the edge because we're going to actually end up making our, our final piece a little bit larger than the bowl so it'll cover the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take my regular ballpoint pen and just draw a circle around the edge of the bowl. And so when I pull my bowl away, I can see that I have a nice circle here. And so uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my seam gauge and I'm going to measure out a circle around that that is one inch bigger than the circle I just traced with my bowl. And so that will allow to for the binding that we're going to put. And so just uh, every little bit there, just kind of make a mark and keep turning your ruler. This is why seam gauge is nice because it makes a little not tree to follow, but if you don't have one handy, a regular ruler is fine. You could even mark your ruler with a piece of masking tape or something just to help you keep track of where you are. So. I'm just going to do this all the way around and then just carefully connect my uh, dotted lines as I go to make a nice circle. So make them pretty close together so that you uh, have an easy time connecting them. And so I'm just going to go all the way around and then show you what it looks like when I'm finished. Okay, so now I've gone all the way around and I'm ready to cut it out. And I think cutting in a circle is a lot easier with a rotary cutter. So that's what I'm going to use here. Um, you could also use your sewing scissors, but if you're using a, a rotary cutter, be sure that you're using a cutting board like this one. This is a self healing cutting mat. So you don't want to damage your table. Just be careful of that. Okay. So I'm going to cut all the way around my big circle like this. Just be careful. Circles are a little bit hard to cut. Take your time. Making sure I'm cutting through. Yep. And then um, if you're making multiple bowl covers, if you maybe have a couple different uh, scraps of fabric you're using, maybe you want to make a couple in one sitting. Uh, once you've kind of traced out your bowl like this, you can go ahead and cut multiple um, bowl covers. Uh, just using this as your pattern. So um, that's one little trick there if you're trying to make the most of your sewing time.
now that we have our full cover cut out, we're ready to apply our binding. So now I'm going to flip it right side out and I'm going to unfold my bias tape on one side. And so with right sides together, I'm going to pin this to the edge of my uh, bowl cover here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Um, so you're going to have to use quite a few pins for this because you're pinning it on a curve. Um, so you're going to have to convince it to be circular, even though it's going to want to be a little bit more straight than that. That's okay. This is another good use for wonder clips. So if you happen to have uh, those around, a lot of times um, they're used by quilters. Um, I have also found them helpful in garment making. <laughs> so if you have those around, uh, this would be a, a great time to use them. It would be a lot quicker than pinning. I'm just going to use pins because I feel like most people probably have pins in their sewing room. So we're going to do it this way. And so as you can see, um, it's going to start to curl up a little bit because it's uh, trying to uh, take a round shape and that's fine. Um, so I'm just going to go all the way around and I'll show you. So as you can see, I've pinned all the way around. It's good to give yourself a generous piece of bias tape when you start so you have some extra because uh, you'd rather have extra to trim off than to have yourself come up short. So as you can see here, I had a little bit too much. And so I make sure that it's overlapped um, just like this. And I'm going to um, trim off the excess here so that when I attach it all, um, you won't actually see um, the, the ends there. So since I've got enough, I'm just going to trim it like this. So now I'm going to grab my sewing machine and show you how to attach it. Um, I actually misspoke just then. We're going to go to the very end of this part. That uh, is the next step where we're going to leave our opening. Okay, so there we go. All the way around. So this first step is secure the whole way around the circle. Okay. So the next important step is to take our iron and we're going to press it so that um, we have a nice sharp um, edge where we just stitched. So this is going to be on the outside of this line of stitches we just put in to make sure that it doesn't bubble up like this once we have our elastic in. Um, so to do this, we are going to make sure that we sandwich in there our end pieces like this and then fold it like that. You're welcome to pin it if you'd like but we're going to just make sure that it's tucked in there as we go and then we're going to press and this will be sure that we get a nice secure um, binding here because the next step after this we will go and stitch create our little um, tunnel there for our elastic and this will ensure that everything is really secure and comes out a nice crisp clean look so do that all the way around and then we'll go back to our sewing machine So now that I have folded my bias tape um, back down the way it should go, uh, you can see that on both sides, um, it's all sandwiched in so that the edge of my bowl cover is tucked in there. I have decided to pin mine just to make sure that I catch the edge of the uh, bowl cover into the bias tape 
You don't have to pin it if you don't want to. I just like to be sure of that. And so now I'm going to stitch all the way around with the exception of a small piece where I'm going to um, use that opening to put my elastic in just a moment. Um, I have put two pins where I'm going to stop so that I remember to stop there. Uh, sometimes I just need a little reminder like that. And so what we're going to do is sew as close as we can to the inside edge of our bias tape, being sure to catch our fabric as we go. Remember to backstitch as you get started. I like to turn my hand wheel as I'm getting set up just to be sure I have it exactly where I want because a little bit of precision is necessary here. Okay. Take your time as you go. There's no reason to rush through this part. This is probably the hardest part of the project. to my double pins here, so I'm just going to stitch a little bit further in back stitch. All right, so we've gone most of the way around, and that will allow us to put our elastic in this little place here that we've created. So now we're going to put in our elastic. So as you can see, I have used my safety pin to attach to the end of of one end of our elastic and I'm going to use that to inch it along in our uh, little space here that we created with our binding. So our space is just big enough for the safety pin so it's kind of snug. Take your time. Most important thing is not to lose track of the other end because we need to attach those ends together uh, to complete the circle here in a moment. So you're going to have to scrunch up your project a little bit as you go um, to allow for that uh, tightness that's going to hold it around your bowl. But that's what creates a nice secure cover. So as you can see, it is starting to bunch up, which is exactly what we want. As you get to the other end, you're going to pull it out, making sure that you have both ends exposed because you're going to sew them together next. All right, so we've made it all the way around, and I'll show you how we're going to sew them together. Okay, so I'm going to attach the ends of my elastic together uh, just using a hand sewing technique because I found that my sewing machine was a little frustrated with this skinny elastic and this was an easier solution. So I'm going to overlap my 
elastic ends a little bit. I have doubled up my thread to make my, my work half as hard. And I'm just going to basically do it like a buttonhole stitch because my um, elastic is sort of wide, especially um, as I stretch it out. I'm going to have to secure it by running it through that double uh, loop like this and then pull it down like that. So that makes sure that it's really secure. So I'm going to basically tack it. Oops. <laughs> I looped it by accident. One second, guys. There we go. All right. So anyways, I'm going to overlap them like this. And I'm just going to go up and down to tack it really well. Um, just do this a bunch of times to make sure it's really secure, kind of go up and down the length of the overlapped part. Because you want to make sure that that doesn't snap when you are uh, stressing it as you put it around your bowl. So you want to make sure that it holds its um, secure a connection there. So again, you can try to do this on your sewing machine. I found that to be more difficult than sewing it by hand. Whichever way you prefer. This is how I'm going to do it this time around. It's okay to test it out while your um, elastic is still being sewn to make sure that it's nice and secure. And mine is, so I'm just going to tie off a knot and go on to the next step. I stopped so that my stitches overlap a little bit with the ones I had in previously. Um, and so last but not least, we will trim our loose threads and we need to arrange our elastic so that it goes around evenly um, and doesn't bunch up on one end. So I'm just going to kind of stretch it out like that, rearrange it a little bit so that it's the same all the way around. And now I'm ready to test it out. Okay, so now I'm ready to try it out and put it on my bowl. And as you can see, that turned out just right. And so this is how it looks on the side. It comes down um, about an inch. And so that works out great. And you can see that I stretched out my elastic so that it's about even all the way around. Um, so that is what a completed project looks like. Thank you so much for joining us for the Suffolk Sewing Circle. Make an elastic bowl cover. And we hope to see you again soon.